Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add stackable item capabilities to the inventory system that I did tutorials not too long ago. I put all of those tutorials in a playlist. So if you haven't seen them, you can check them out. But here is the last state where we left off with that project. After I did some inventory tutorials, I also made a first person player controller here, but I went and turned those out so it wouldn't affect our tutorial here. The first thing that I'm going to start with is adding the number in all of those slots. So let's open the item slot prefab and inside here we're going to add UI text. So here is our UI text. Let's stretch it to fill in the box and the text I'm going to align it on the right side. Let's put in a number and a font size of 16. I'll change the color to white and then I can move it from top by one and from right by one to just have a little bit of padding. I'll leave it at that and by default I'm going to have it turned off. So you can't see that text anymore. And now that that is ready, we need to add some new variables. Usually we would configure this with a scriptable object, but since I'm using Bolt here, I'm making all those configuration on the prefab of the item. So right here I have a caret prefab. And if we scroll down, currently the only variable that we have here is a sprite of that caret crop. And we use that sprite to display it in the inventory. Again, all of that setup and explanation about why we're doing it are in the previous videos. So if you're not sure about anything, go ahead and check those out. And now some of the variables that we need to add to determine if this item is stackable or not. So for that, we can add another variable. I'll just call it stackable and it's going to be a Boolean. Let's say that we want the carriage to be stackable. We'll turn that value to true. And later on, we can check this variable to determine if we want to stack these items or not. The next variable that we want to add is count and it's going to be an integer. And this count is basically telling me how much of these items do I get when I pick it up. Let's just by default set it to one. When we pick up one carrot, we just get one carrot. And the last variable that I'm going to add is an item ID. So let's add that in and it will be a string. And for the item ID, I'm just going to put a value of carrot. Since this is a carrot item, I'm just going to use the item ID carrot for it. That way I'll be able to check for this item ID in my inventory and see if there is a slot with that item ID already in there. So I'll reorder them, put the item ID at the top. So these are the three new variables that we'll add and I'm going to be using them for the stackable options. Now I went ahead and did the same thing for the turnip. So if we select the turnip, you can see that I have the item ID turnip and stackable is set to false. So I'll be able to test the difference between stackable and unstackable items. That's all the configuration that we needed to do for the items themselves. And now we need to modify two of our graphs. So one of the graphs is going to be the item slot graph and the other graph is going to be our inventory graph. I'll start with the one that is a little bit more complicated and is the item slot. So let's go and find that graph. And inside here, we also need to add some variables. So one of the variables that we need to add is the item ID. It's going to be a string and I added a space here so that the type would stay. Otherwise, if the string is left empty, the type is going to disappear. And the other variable that we need is the count. So let's add that in. It's going to be an integer. By default, it's going to be a zero. So currently when we add an item to our inventory, what we do is we set the sprite and then set is taken to true. And that's pretty much all we do here. Now that we have an item ID, we also need to store that ID. So let's set that item ID variable. So the way that we're going to do it is create a sequence and I'll need a sequence of three. The first thing we're going to do is the logic that we did before. And the second thing we're going to do is actually set the item ID. We can get the item ID from the argument zero, because if you remember, we're actually passing the game object that we're picking up to which we just added a new variable and item ID. So we can say get variable and for variable name, we are looking for the item ID. So connect that and that is it. That's all we need to do to store that item ID. I misspelled item. There we go. And the next thing after we store the item ID, what we need to do is keep the count of how many items we have. So for that, let's add the set count in here and connect it to our sequence. The value that we want to store 
to our count is our current count. And we want to add the count that we have from our item that we just picked up. The variable that we use to store count in our item is also count. All we have to do is change the game object that we're getting the variable from. And that's pretty much it. And after we change the count, we need to figure out if we want to display the count by the item or not. So I decided to show the count only if it's greater than one. How we can do that is get a greater than unit and compare it with one. If it's greater than one, then we can create a branch. If it's true, then we can get the child and the index of our text is actually at one. Just using the indexes here, you can create variables if you want. And then the first thing we're going to set active to true, pass in the child. And the next thing, let's set the text. The text component is inside of our child. So we connect that and then we can get the count value that we want to display. Now we want to use integer to string unit because we want to display a string. And this is pretty much it for adding ability of adding a stackable item to our inventory. Like I said, we also need to modify our inventory. So let's go and do that. In our inventory, let's go to our embedded graph. So this is what we have for it currently. The script is just looping through those items and trying to find a next available empty slot. But now we actually want to modify when we add an item. So currently the only time when we add the item to the slot is if is taken is false. But now we also want to check if the item is actually stackable. And if the item ID equals to the item ID of the current taken slot, then we want to add that item. To do that, we need to do some Boolean logic. So first, let's disconnect this from here. I'm going to negate this is taken because I want to change it from false to true. So if the output of this logic can be true, then I'm going to add the item. Otherwise, I'm going to go to the next slot. After the negate, I'm going to add or. So if someone's not familiar what negate is, it just flips true to false and false to true. So it just takes the opposite. From this or, we're going to connect to this branch. So basically, this right here at the top is exactly what we had before, except we get an error right now from or because we need to pass in the second condition as well. And the second condition that we're checking for is if the item is stackable. So for that, we're going to use a game object. The variable that we're checking for is stackable. And the game object that holds that variable is the one that we get from the custom event. So we can connect it right here. And we want to connect to an end unit. So this end unit is going to go to or because two conditions need to be true for us to actually be able to add the item. The item needs to be stackable and the item IDs should match. So that means we need to check for the item ID variables. We're going to be comparing two item ID variables. And since our variables are string, let's actually use string equal A and B and that can go to our B value. Now one of the variables is stored in the slot and the item slot is right here inside this child. So we can connect that as the game object. And the other one is the pickup item that we have. So we can connect that as well. And that's pretty much it. This finalizes what we need to do. So let's go and test it out. Make sure that we haven't missed anything. Okay, once I start play, I can pick up the item and you can see that those items are actually stacking up. Now I chose a, a wrong color for that item. Let me quickly change that to gray. Now you can see once I get at least two items that count appears. And if I pick up this turnip, you can see those items are actually not stacking. In one of the videos, I did show how to use these items and regain the hunger level. That was just a side tutorial. And I can still use it on those turnips. But if I use it on this carrot, you can see that that logic doesn't work anymore because we need to modify to subtract from the count instead of just removing it. So again, let's go back to our item slot the graph. I was going to leave this one for the next video, but this shouldn't take much time. So might as well just cover it here. So in here, we need to make some modifications, just like we are increasing the count when we're adding new item in here. We need to decrease that count once we use that item. So let's start by duplicating these three units, moving them here. And I'm going to add a negative one, which is the same as subtracting one. And I'll put it right after this branch. So let's move it apart and move these units down right here. So after the branch, we're going to decrease the count. And in here, I want to check if it's greater than zero. So for that, I'll use a branch. So let's connect it right here. And what I want to do now is 
if it's greater than zero, then I don't want to clear the is taken and change the color of our slot. I just want to run this logic right here, which is just subtracting four from the hunger level. But currently it is in the middle of this logic. So we'll have to break it out and connect it right there. And this logic right here, we're going to move at the end. I'll connect it at the end here. Now, if the branch is false, then I want to run through the logic. That means I need to clear the slot. If it's greater than zero, that means we still have items there. Then I just want to actually regain that hunger level. And that's it. Now, after we change the count, we want to refresh the count in our UI, which we already do right here. Let's just reuse the logic that we have here. The way that I'm going to connect is after this logic, go to this branch. Now, there is some changes that we need to do. Currently, we are accessing the set variable for the count. And the set variable exists in another flow, which if we're going to leave it just like that, is going to throw errors. Instead, let's use the get variable unit and connect it like that. So now this logic is independent of what was happening previously in the flow. So that's going to update our count. But I also want to hide the text of the count after it goes below two. So for that, let's duplicate these two units, put it right here. And if this branch is false, that means our count is one or less, then we want to go into this logic. And in this logic, all it's going to do is set active to false. That is it. So let's go and click play and see if that actually works now. So we can see that we're picking up those carrots and the carrot count up is working. And we can also pick up the turnips. If we eat the turnip, that health regains. And if we eat the carrot, the count of carrots go down and we still gain that health. After we get to one, we can see that the count disappears. And if we click one more time, the unit gets cleared. Now in the next video, I'm going to be using this inventory again. And in that video, I'll be showing how to use a simple craft system. Thanks for watching. Click on the like button if you liked the video. Subscribe to our channel and I'll see you in the next one.